Hi, welcome to Ranger Country. I'm Peter, and I'm on my own today. Uh, no Lawrence. So I'm here today on my own to review air guns and accessories. Today we're going to open up a rather large debate. We're going to get a lot of people disagreeing with me. We're going to get a few people maybe agreeing with me, but it's going to get us, us all talking. And that subject that we're talking about today is cleaning your air gun. Should you, shouldn't you, when should you, sh if you if you do need to, and how do you do it? And what, what materials to use? Um, now, it, it's quite a divided, quite a divided subject. I know that ex-military guys will absolutely shudder with some of the things I'm going to say. We, we've got an ex-military guy on the range insists on cleaning his rifle every time he shot it, just like he did with his service weapon. Is it the best idea? Who knows? It's, um, it, it's one of those things that's very personal. If it works for you, then it works for you. And that's it really. So there's a few trains of thought. So we'll start with the first one. Don't clean it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I must admit that quite a lot of the time, that is the philosophy that I adopt. If your gun's shooting right, you're not getting it wet. It's not mucky. You're not getting horrible fingerprints on it, greasy fingerprints on it. Then why clean it? The biggest reason I think for cleaning cleaning a gun is accuracy issues. If you're suddenly, um, you, you've been shooting bang on and you're using the same pellets, you're using the same everything, you've checked the power of the chrono, it could be your barrel needs cleaning. Now this can happen, I think Daystate recommend or suggest that probably every 500 pellets, so every tin of pellets maybe, you, you give it a pull through or whichever method of cleaning you, 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 you prefer. Other people say, don't do it. I know myself, I'm not a great one for cleaning if it doesn't need it. If something's not gone wrong, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I'm probably in the minority. Now, we have had um, quite a few guns. Today we've got with us um, one of the fantastic ATA Airborne rifles and it's brand new. I've just taken it out of the box this morning and I can guarantee that the Turks have packed the barrel with grease to protect it because they don't know when that gun, when, when that gun will be first used, um, how it's going to be stored. So to protect the barrel they pack it with quite, quite, a, quite, quite a good covering of grease. The Chinese guns are, are very similar as well but we did have recently on the range, on our air gun range here, a gentleman with a BSA R12 and he said it's it started shooting erratically I said okay have you cleaned your barrel he says no okay and it was one of the filthiest barrels that we've come across I don't think it had ever been cleaned since since he started using it and it's just got worse and worse and worse and it took me probably 15 pull throughs with the Napier to, to get it clean and you know what it was pellet on pellet after that, so it just shows. Now, we've got a few products here. Now, we have the, the traditional cleaning rod, three-piece cleaning rod with a selection of, you've got a, a phosphor bronze, it should be phosphor bronze, wire brush in it. You've got a, a couple of wool mops, and you've got a jag. No, not the clocks and jag, this sort of jag, where you'd put a piece of um, lint, a bit of cloth over it, push it through. If you're into full ball up shooting, um, shotgun shooting, you'll, you'll know the term jag, not clocks and jag. So this one, this cleaning kit is ideal for brake barrel guns. And also it's very ideal for clearing stuck pellets in your PCP. When you have double treble indexed or you don't have enough air supply in your cylinder to eject your pellet, the sooner you realise the better 
and the easier it is. If you've got two pallets in your in your barrel, they should push out from the from the muzzle end down to the breech. Not too much problem. Very handy for that. Good for break barrel guns to clean the barrel, uh, either with the the phosphor bronze or with the 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 wool or cotton mop or the jag. So that's the the three-piece cleaning rod set. Now we also have a tin of cleaning pellets. Now the idea with these is, just put this back in there, they never go back the way they came out do they? So that's gone. A tin of Remington cleaners, cleansers, 177. So these are basically a little felt wad and you basically fire these through your through your rifle, through through your barrel, and hopefully they, they remove the muck. They do, to a certain extent. How well they, they remove the muck, we will see in a little test in a, in a short while. Pretty cheap, probably, I, I don't know exactly, probably about four quid for a, a tin of those. And now we have the Napier, Power Products pull-through kit, the Rolls-Royce. Now, there's a spare set of uh, the air gun patches that they that they do with them. And as if by magic, in true Blue Peter style, I have our workshop cleaning kit here. So to, to save opening that, so I'll replace that with that. No sticky back plastic here, I'm afraid, for all you Blue Peter fans. Um, and there we go, one pull through, very well made. We haven't had one of these fail on us yet, yet. Now, sometimes it does feel when you're pulling it through, like you're pulling it too hard. I don't know if any of you have used uh, bore snakes on a, on a shotgun, on a, on a full bore rifle, on a rimfire rifle. You really do feel like it's gonna pull apart as, you, as you're pulling that through but they, they don't, and this doesn't either. Now, these have these little cleaning patches, again, available in a, a refill pack of 100, about three quid, I think, for the, for the 100 there, the refills. And on these patches, you would use two of these together on a 177 rifle. On a 2.2, you would add an extra one and have three together. You can use them wet or dry. They also supply this power air gun oil. Um, protects against corrosion, lubricates, performs in all temperatures. Pretty good for the UK, eh? Never know what we're going to get. So rust preventative in there, a um, little pump dispenser, non-aerosol for all you eco um, concerned people. Um, and that's, that's about it. So I think we probably ought to give a demo and see what they all do. So here we have our trusty 88 Airborne 177 caliber in this one I've chosen because I had the 177 cleaning pellets. Now I'm gonna shoot one of these through and then we'll re retrieve it and see just how mucky it is. And then we'll use the Napier pull through to see how much it has actually cleaned and how much is actually left behind. So we have to cock the gun. Now, I could have chosen a better gun for this. I could have chosen a single shot air arms or a day state with a, um, with a single shot tray in, because it's a little bit fiddly. I don't know if you'd want to put these in your magazine. I, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably want to single feed these. And I dare say you could put a little bit of the Napier Power Air Gun Oil on them. So, close the bolt, that pushes it into the breech. The gun's live. I'm gonna point it down, safe direction, and that went somewhere. I don't know where. We will find it back in a moment. 
So we've retrieved the pallet. It is dirty. It has removed quite a bit of muck from the rifle. And you can see the rifling where it has actually fed into the rifling and it has actually cleaned out the rifling. It's, it's taken the pattern of, the, the muck has taken the pattern of it onto the felt. So now the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. But we're not going to be eating any petty puddings here today. We are going to be. Now that was only one shot, bear in mind. If you were to keep going and going, you'd obviously get it a lot cleaner. So I'm going to put a couple of sheets of just standard common or garden kitchen roll to protect our, our bench. Now, I've taken the moderator off, off this rifle. Always do it with the moderator off, with the shroud off. Um, you don't want any muck, anything get, getting into your baffles. The, the, the less you've got there, the better, I always think. So we feed this in from the muzzle end. Obviously 177 is a little bit tighter than, than a 2.2. It's a whole millimetre less smaller. There we go. And it comes out that end. Again, 177, remember, two air gun patches. So just run them between my hands as though they were 20 pound notes. Make sure they aren't too stuck together. And we've put them in there like that, fold them over. I'm going to give these a squirt of the air gun oil. I'm pleased to put that kitchen roll down. Right, now we'll pull them through and it does take quite a bit to pull it. All squeaky clean or not. So wrap my hand around it, pull it out. Okay, so now I did only, bear in mind, I did only pull, put one cleaning wad through. But as you can see, that is pretty filthy. The top camera will pick that up. I'll put it against the, the, the light blue. Absolutely filthy. So let's do that again. Another two patches. Now this, the ATA, the fantastic ATA Airborne is a Turkish built rifle. And we find that the Turks do like to put quite a bit of protection down the barrel. Whether it's it's non-deliberate and it's left over from machining, or whether it is deliberate and it's protection for transport and for, for storage, I don't know. But this grease can affect your accuracy greatly. It is, um, I think it's one of the big things. If, if you're having problems, it's really something that you need to you need to look at. It's always that bit at the end there. I stopped pulling. There we go. So this is the second pull. I didn't want to do that, did I? That's the second pull through. Quite a bit of muck still. Whether that's lead fouling, might be. I would suggest it's more like grease. Grease and protection. Obviously when it's your gun and you've cleaned it to start with and you've shot it for 500,000, 2,000 shots, you'll know that it is mainly lead fouling. Uh, and it's not, it's not too bad to remove it. Again, going back to the center fire guys, you know, when you're trying to clean your, your barrel out of um, copper fouling, that, that's, that's quite a job. You know, that, that uh, jacketed bullet going down there at uh, quite a rate, it does foul that barrel up and it's they're a bit of a nightmare to clean. I don't enjoy them. Great shooting them, but not cleaning them. So I'll try and pull this out in a wanna. 
nearly. Still got some fouling there, a lot less. So that's three, three pull throughs. I'm going to go again, but this time I'm going to go in dry. Without the oil on them. Again, check that you haven't got two 20 pound notes stuck together. If you did in a 177 or 22, if you did put extra one in, you might be in trouble with pulling it through. So it's probably best to treat them like 20 pound notes. Okay, so much better. That was dry, much better. If I wasn't filming, I'd probably keep going uh, until that was until that was spotless, and then I'd shoot it again and see exactly what had uh, what what the difference was. So let's move on. Next part of cleaning. Right now, onto the next part of cleaning your rifle. Sometimes people who go out to hunting or indeed target shooters, the rifle can get wet. That's bad. It is bad if you don't dry it afterwards. Now. To take the rifles out of the stock, generally a PCP is one screw. In this case on the ATA Airborne, one six millimeter headed Allen key bolt. Um, now, I'm not sure, the, not 100% sure the finish on these. I will be corrected, I dare say, in the comments. Um, but I would suggest this is probably just an oil finish on this, maybe a stain and, and an oil. Um, to treat this, I, I would be happy to put walnut oil or linseed oil on this and just build up different layers, you know, su subsequent layers. And inside there, if you do get the rifle wet, it's always important to dry it out. You can, always, you, you can apply, um, again, your walnut oil, your linseed oil in here, and it, it will protect your woodwork. The, the wood does suck up the oil, uh, abs absorbs it in, and it it feeds the walnut, feeds, feeds, feeds the wood. And you do tend to get on the Turkish guns, quite a nice piece of wood on them as well. So I always think it's nice to, nice to work with that wood, feed it and bring out the natural luster of the wood. So hopefully that's the wood taken care of, the stock. That is if you do have a, a wood stock or a walnut stock. <clears throat> if you have beech, chances are it's, it's a sealed finish, such as a, a lacquer or, or a varnish. Um, I'll probably get, uh, get told it's not on some of the comments, but generally a wipe down on a beach stock, if, if, it's, if it's sealed, a wipe down with a, um, a, a lightly oiled rag, will something like a Napier, Napier cleaning spray, will remove a handprint, some will remove muck, won't affect the finish at all. It's very good stuff, that is. Now, that brings us to the action. Now, we have this term in air gun shooting, dieseling. Now, I don't know how many people are familiar with how a diesel engine works on a car. It, it is uh, fuel injected into, into a cylinder uh, along with air and compressed very, very, very much to very high pressures. Um, and when that happens, the, the air and the fuel ignite. Um, and if we're not careful with air guns, that's exactly what can happen. I'm sure we've all seen it with uh, spring guns. You know, you've oiled your gun, you, you, you've oiled the barrel, you've, you've, you've put some oil somewhere, or when they're new, you start shooting them and you get a little whiff of smoke coming out the barrel and it smells like burning. That's dieseling. That's where the, the compression pressure in the cylinder has, has generated enough heat and pressure to ignite the, um, the mineral oil that, that's been applied inside the, the internals of the rifle. Um, just a little diesel engine, basically. A little, little flame, <clears throat> um, a little, little combustion. Not good. Not good for the, uh, 
Not good for the spring, for the piston seal, or the rifle at all, really. PCPs are a little bit more important that you don't get the, the mineral oil, <coughs> excuse me, and the pneumatics mixed up because you've got a cylinder here, very, very high pressure air. So we're, we're looking 200 bar in here, 3000 PSI almost, a lot of pressure. So we need to keep anything mineral based, and that is, you know, the, uh, uh, an oil, a, a, a lubricant that could ignite under high pressure. We need to keep all that away from any, any part of the pneumatic side of this. And as long as we do that, we're all good. Now, to lubricate your O-rings, uh, such as your fill probe O-rings, um, your, your breech seal O-rings, a little silicon grease. <clears throat> we, we sell it in a tube. It's a clear grease, very good, non-combustible, and does the job admirably. On the back end here, we have pivots, we have mechanical moving parts. So these are a little bit more, need to be treated a little bit differently. These can have a little bit more, um, a better oil applied to them. So a, a little bit of grease, if you like. I always prefer, <clears throat> I always prefer a little bit of light lubrication oil. Um, we, we do the Bisley gun lubricant, and a little part of that on the on the mating surfaces, on the on the moving surfaces, generally helps them glide, cuts down the wear, makes them nice and smooth. If the grease or oil that you use is too thick, it can cause drag. It can cause drag on your hammer. So as the hammer's going forward to open your uh, firing valve, your main valve, it can cause drag on it, slow it down, cut the power of your gun down. Um, and that's a, that's a whole different debate, whether you actually add a lubricant onto the hammer slide or whether you polish it and have metal on metal. I know in air arms, the, um, the, the hammer has steel bearings inside it, two steel bearings, one at each end, and it slides on a, on a, on a steel shaft, basically up and down. And when we do a service on those, we, we polish them, we, we polish the, uh, both the both the bearings and and the um, chaff that they that they run on. So if you've if you've been out shooting, you've got your gun wet. It's a good idea to take it out of the stock. Probably leave it in the in the open air for a few hours in the house with a you know nice warm atmosphere. Wipe it down with with a dry cloth, and probably. Probably blow any any dust, any muck out of the different apertures, uh, either with your either with your mouth, or if you have access to a a low pressure compressor, just just blow blow the dust off, blow the muck off. Um, generally, make sure it's dry and a light coating of of oil, such as the 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 Napier, like like the Napier air gun oil, or the Napier cleaner wouldn't go amiss, just a very light coating, but remember, away from the pneumatics. So, to summarise, do you clean or don't you clean? Well, that's entirely up to you. I think it's a good idea at the start, when you receive your rifle, give the barrel a clean, and regular maintenance, especially if you get it wet, will give you years of good service from your rifle. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe down in this corner, I believe. Thank you.